Ayo, what is crackalackin, my favorite people? Welcome back to another Evercasters video. Today, a should you pull for the latest banner featuring Tifa and Barrett. Tifa gets the Passion Mermaid outfit, which has Sun's Favor and Flameblade Arcanum, which if you don't know or forgot, I have added those to the slide so you can see what they do. Tifa's weapon is Shell Knuckles. Looks really cool. And here you can see a all of the stats, uh, command abilities, all of the stuff in one place for Tifa's new weapon. Barrett gets the Shark Slayer, which also looks pretty cool. And once again, all of the stats, command abilities, etc. are here in one place for you to check out. When I saw Tifa's new weapon, I immediately thought of Zenoga Blade, so that is going to be the weapon to compare to today. As you can see, very similar primary stats, with only a 7 point stat difference for Zenoga Blade. They both have, sadly, total 70 points of our ability points, with their respective damage types and elemental types. And they both have X sigils. And finally, their command abilities are literally exactly the same as well with the only difference being the damage type, magic versus physical, and the element, lightning, and fire. So, as you can see, very, very almost identical weapons. This uh, Shell Knuckles is basically a carbon copy of Zenoga Blade, except for magic and fire. For weapon synergies with her existing weapons, honestly, nothing really to ride home about. She has a few sort of synergies, for example, Power Soul can kind of be considered a synergy because it's a magical weapon and gives boost HP and magic ability potency. Those would work well together. Same thing with Kazer Knuckles would work well with the Shell Knuckles because of the high potency magic defense debuff, making Shell Knuckles hit even harder. And then Kirin Gloves and Bunny Gloves also kind of have synergy. If you have Shell Knuckles and Kirin Gloves, you get boost magic attack level 6. Of course, you get the dual elements of fire and lightning, and then you get the magic attack buff of mid potency, which is going to make them both stronger. And then the Bunny Gloves is a similar thing, except you get max boost magic attack. You get the dual elements of fire and water, and then you get the magic attack buff, making them both stronger of low to high potency. So, not the craziest synergies, but there is something there at least. For sub-weapon value, just like Sonoga Blade, this is a meh sub-weapon. It only has the total R70 ability points, so that's what makes it pretty bad as a sub-weapon. And then it's only boost magic attack and the fire potency. Now, Shark Slayer, we are, it's a double elemental debuffing weapon, so it's an easy comparison to Red's uh, collars that do the same thing, so the Ivy collar and then the Silver collar as well. So let's compare those. As you can see, the uh, Shark Slayer has much more sort of physical attack, it's more of an offensive weapon. And then with our ability points, it's 101 versus 82. So Ivy Collar wins out there, it has a lot more total R ability points, and it is its emphasis is on the R1 with boost attack, whereas Shark Slayer's emphasis is on the R2 with buff debuff extension. And then the support material is pretty different, with the Shark Slayer having a sigil boost, and the Ivy Collar having attack boosts for the elements that it debuffs. Finally, the command abilities are pretty much identical, they're both lower fire resistance, Shark Slayer lowers water, whereas Ivy Collar lowers ice. For Silver Collar, this has much more of an emphasis on healing. So the physical attack stat is much higher on Shark Slayer, it's more offensive, whereas the heal stat is very high on Silver Collar. Our abilities, it's 82 total points versus 88, so pretty comparable. Once again, the focus is on heal, so boost heal for the Silver Collar and buff debuff for the Shark Slayer. And then the support materia, again, it's a sigil boost versus an attack boost for one of the elements that Silver Collar debuffs. And then, once again, showing that healing emphasis and all cure spells. 
Finally, for the command ability, Barrett's does do 100% more physical non-elemental damage. That's neither here nor there. And they both lower water resistance this time, with Barrett's lowering fire and Red's lowering wind. So again, very comparable weapons. For existing synergies, much like Tifa, there's not much going for it with his existing weapons. You could combine Shark Slayer and Flame Projector to have a fire debuffing weapon and fire DPS in one. Of course, it is a bit of an awkward synergy because the Shark Slayer is more of a physical weapon, whereas Flame Projector is magical. But Shark Slayer does have a decent magic attack stat as well, so it's not too bad. And then there's also synergies with Micro Laser and Double mach W Machine. Excuse me more of a team synergy basically so you could bring shark slayer and uh, micro laser to a magic attack team and then the buff debuff from shark slayer works on the uh, debuffs for shark slayer and the magic attack buff for micro laser and then the same thing for w machine with a physical team the buff debuff will last make the physical defense down last a lot longer and of course the debuffs for elements this sub weapon value for Shark Slayer is much better than Tifa's at least because of the 82 total R ability points. And then on top of that, it has boost HP, which is good for everyone, and buff debuff extension, which is great for supports or anyone who has a buff or debuff. So this is actually a very, very good sub weapon for supports, etc. So, Tifa's glove. The Shell Knuckles is a very good weapon. It is in the 5th best magic attack stat category, but not bad. The major downfall, just like the Zenoga Blade, is the total R ability points, which is only 70. It is the highest percentage fire damage weapon right now, and it has a very fast cast time, which makes it very good in my opinion. And it is as powerful, if not more powerful, than a limited weapon, that is the Zenoga Blade. They are pretty much identical weapons but Tifa's costs a lot faster actually, so there's that. For Barrett, his weapon is a solid weapon. It has a good physical attack stat. It's not in any top five categories, but it's still solid. It obviously covers debuffs for two elements, which is nice, and it has the standard R82 ability points. And then it is a very nice sub weapon for support or any buff debuffers. Um, for example, you know, Aerith with the Kimura Wand makes that buff last longer, or even Cloud with Glavinous Sword. Now, before I go into the reasons to pull, there is one major consideration, and that is the major update, where we are going to be getting Vincent, of course, as a new character, and he's going to be coming, as every new character does, with a whole bunch of his own new weapons. And according to the data miners, he might actually arrive with even more new weapons than some of the other characters we've recently received. So this is probably the biggest factor in deciding whether you want to pull for the current banner is do you have enough resources to pull for Vincent? Do you want to pull for Vincent? And that is something you really need to consider. So, with that out of the way, reasons to pull for Tifa's Shell Knuckles is if you are lacking fire DPS in general, or you just want the strongest fire damaging ability right now, or if you're lacking specifically magical fire DPS and you need to cover that. Another reason is if you have a strong fire or magic defense debuffing weapons, or both, then this will be a great DPS addition to a fire team. For Barrett's weapon, Basically, if you're lacking fire or water resistance debuffs, obviously this weapon's going to be good. And then one of the main reasons for me is that it is a sub weapon for any buff debuff character, so it's great for any support. And that includes, as I mentioned earlier, DPSs like Cloud with Glavinous Sword. For example, you could bring Cloud with Sky Splitter or Maritime Sword on the main hand and Glavinous Sword on the off hand, which raises his attack and lowers the enemy's defense. And then you have this as a sub weapon, and that makes those buffs and debuffs last longer. So, my final thoughts are for Tifa's Shell Knuckles. It is a very nice weapon for both magical and fire DPS for sure. Pretty much exactly the same, if not better, than Zenoga's Blade, which is a limited weapon, so very, very good. 
Uh, it's not great as a sub weapon, obviously, so it's only really worth it if you are going to be using Tifa a lot as a magical fire DPS. And then if you're going for it, you should probably get her outfit as well. And then finally, think about Vincent. Is it worth to pull for this or to wait for Vincent? Then we have the Shark Slayer. This is a pretty nice weapon for dungeon rankings and crisis dungeons, other events like that that have, require multiple elements. It is obviously more valuable if you have a strong fire or water team. And it's obviously less valuable if you plan to use Red 13 as a catch-all elemental debuffer. And then, as mentioned, it is a fantastic sub-weapon for loads of characters and builds. Even if you don't plan to use Barrett himself, it's still worth checking out or maybe even pulling for. But like everything else, think about Vincent. Are these weapons worth it or is it worth it to wait for Vincent? At the end of the day, neither of these two weapons are limited, so you can eventually get them on the wishlist and later down the line with tickets. For me, I would much prefer to pull for Vincent, but I have no gems for either banner, so I'm going to be feeling the pain. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.